Okay, have you got your calculator there? Yeah. Yes? Okay, good. You'll need it in a second. Now, when you hear the word exponential, there are a few different options for this, but what, what's the next word that you expect to come in the phrase? Growth, I think, is the right exponential growth. And that just means something's going really, really fast, right? Well, there's a specific kind of exponential growth that there is. Uh, it comes from this. <coughs> okay, now, exponential growth doesn't just mean growth that's very, very fast. Okay, it means a particular kind of growth. Let me put it to this way, right? Um, x squared, it grows fast, right? But x cubed grows faster and, you know, x to the 300 grows faster, okay? These all grow very fast, but they're all the same kind of growth. We call them polynomial growth. None of them, no matter how ridiculous this number gets, none of them are as fast as exponential growth because it's doing something different, okay? The idea behind exponential growth is a population, right? The larger a population gets, the faster it can grow, right? Does that make sense? Like rabbits, you know, the more that there are of them, right, the more quickly they can reproduce. It's not just, oh, they'll keep growing faster. It's by their very nature. The more rabbits there are, the faster they can make new families. Okay? And that's exactly the same thing that's happening with money. The more money you have, the more interest you can make, which means more money you have, right? So in other words, what distinguishes these two growths, even though this is fast, is that this is going to get ever faster and it's proportional to how big something is. So the bigger it gets, it's just going to go crazy. Okay? Now, think about this with me. Just think about a particular rate. Suppose I just have a dollar, right? I don't know if you guys realize this, but if you have $5, right, and you have some interest rate in some amount of time, that $5 is going to earn exactly the same amount of interest as a dollar here, a dollar here, a dollar here, a dollar here, and a dollar here. Okay? So you get five bank accounts all with a dollar in them, and just by putting them in a pile of five dollars, they don't magically earn more interest. You go ahead and, ahead and you check out the numbers, exactly the same. Okay? So therefore, I'm just going to consider the case of one dollar, because every dollar in my bank account, they're all the same, they're all going to behave exactly the same way. It's got lots of them doing the same thing. Okay, now, let's suppose there's a very, very generous bank account, right? which gives you 100% interest, wow. okay? Wow. Now, this sounds very generous, doesn't it? But when you think in terms of the real world, actually, <coughs> it's not that unusual. Think about a population, right? If you've got, like, rabbits, they literally can double, right? And actually, doesn't take them a year to do it, okay? So this is not that unusual, right? So let's consider one year, 100% interest, okay? So this is number one, okay? What will happen to my dollar? What will it become? $2. It'll become $2. And the reason why is because it'll be 1 plus the rate, 100%, which is just 1, to the power of 1. So you get 2. Okay. Now, as you know, though, it, at least if you're dealing with money, right, they don't wait for the end of the year to pay you your extra dollar. Okay. Actually, they're calculating interest constantly. And the more they calculate it, the more money you get. Right. So let's do a bit of an experiment. Number 2. Suppose instead of waiting for a whole year, they do it, say, twice a year, semesterly, okay? Now, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm still getting 100% interest per annum, right? So the formula is not going to be this, right? How must I adjust this formula? There are two compounding periods, but yes, yeah, something's going to divide by two. What's going to divide by two? Is it the rate? Right? Instead of getting 100% at the end, I'll get 50% and then I'll get another 50%. Yes. So I get this. Does that make sense? So what's that equal to? That's, yeah, one and a half is going to be 2.25, right? Nine over four. Two and a quarter. So this is better. This is good, right? Well, why just do it once every semester? Why don't you do it every month? What formula should I write? One plus one over 12. To the 12, okay, calculators, tell me what you get. Um, 2.63? 2.61. 2.61. Okay, now this is interesting. Look, when I doubled, I got an extra 25 cents. That's not bad. It's an extra 10% plus, right? From here to here, I've gotten more frequent, but I'm still gaining more, but actually, Banks go even more than this, right? They'll do it every day for you, right? Really? 
Case number four, yeah. They won't pay it every day, but they'll calculate it every day. They tend to pay monthly. So, what equation should I write? One plus one on 365, and every day, they're gonna go and calculate the interest. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. Two point, now give me some more decimal places. <laughs> Okay, all right. Now, what's going on, right? I would say from monthly to daily, you've increased your rate of compounding dramatically. But all you've gained is like a piddly 10 cents, right? Well, just for the sake of it, maybe you think there's something wrong with their computers. Forget it. Every day, we have very fast computers now. Let's do it every minute, okay? Number five. So let's go. One plus one on every day, 365. How many hours? 24. How many minutes? 60. Whatever that is. Okay? 365. 24. 60. Someone's calculator. Guess what? Spoilers. 2.71828 blah 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 blah. 2.71827. What happened? Now here's the thing, right? I didn't even get a whole set out of it, right? I suppose you can round up. What happened? Well, you know what? Like all of these, these are just arbitrary. Okay? What mathematicians do is they say, forget all of this for days, months, hours, you and your feeble units of measurement. They just say, well, what happens if you just say infinity. infinity. Right now, in maths we call this a limit because, of course, you can't actually do this. Infinity is not a number; it's just an idea, right? But you can take some numbers which are pretty close. You can take like a million or something like that. Whatever large number you like. I did a trillion. You did a trillion, and I'll tell you right now, you're gonna get e dollars. Okay, this number, just like pi. I didn't say, oh, it better be a certain number. I better get there, right? It comes from a structure that exists in nature. Namely, how things grow when they grow in relation to their own size. Or, if you like, how things decay when they decay with relation to their own size. Half-lifes, those kinds of things. Radioactive decay. Temperatures that come down. The hotter something is, the faster it loses temperature. Okay. This is, this is the number of proportionality, of proportional growth or proportional decay. And that's why it's so important, right? Because that's why it appears in your calculator, is because it's a, it's a number that exists in reality, just like pi does. Okay?